In just a few hours, Sunderland Air Show, the biggest event of the year, will get underway. Half a million visitors are heading into the city. Guns. <laughs> See you later. On the ground, Laura Young from Sunderland City Council is coordinating live music acts and visitor attractions. You're right. Any chance you can string it out for eight minutes more. So if you can take that to 2025, that'd be absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, because we can tell the camera to keep on getting shots of it to go on the big screen. Leave these bins. Brilliant. Don't Thanks, don't guys. That corner there, please. Yeah, 45 grand a year. I'll move bins. Yeah? Yeah. Brilliant, right, that's the time we're going on. See? I love it when a plan comes together. All good. All happy faces still. <laughs> You're looking forward to the end of the air show because it's quite a busy time, a lot of stress and a lot of uh, aggravation. But it's obviously a time we take lots of money. Yeah, I've never actually went one year, watched it in all these years. If I could get a year off, that would be great. On the seafront, Lindsay and Grant at the arcade are hoping to cash in on the air show crowds by bringing in new attractions. And this is the earliest we could get this. Which is an old game, but... Old is new, the old is new again, isn't it? So it's lovely. It is lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. It's going to be a money spinner, then. Well, if it's not, it'll be going back. <laughs> this is the one what we've had this season, and this is the Walking Dead, which is uh, awful, but they like that. It could be the most profitable weekend of the year for Lindsay and Grant. But how much money they take is dictated by one thing. If it rains on a bank holiday, then you're grumpy. But you don't want it to rain. <laughs> and it, oh, it often does. <laughs> The rain means the flying display could be postponed or even cancelled. A tough call for flight director Ian Sheely. The challenge today is the weather. We can't actually get aircraft to the display site or safely back to, to land at the moment. But they'll be there under their umbrellas just hoping to see something fly. And if there's an opportunity, we will, we will certainly get something in the sky. Considering we all come from the south, predominantly from the southeast, um, we love coming out to Sunderland. We get very well looked after whilst we're up here. It's one of our favourite shows of the year, to be fairly honest. We all look forward to it. With the cloud level still low, Frank Millerick and the Tigers parachute display team have had to sit it out. What we're doing right now is just prepping the smoke. Um, we're hopefully going to get a a high jump today, um, so we're planning on doing a diamond formation with four canopies in the diamond shape, one at the top, one at the bottom, two in the middle, with a flag and blue smoke. On the seafront, Laura is feeling more hopeful. We're just waiting to find out if they've got enough base, the base clouds all right for them to drop. So what we've had to do, because the tide's coming in, we've had to extend the drop zone, so I'm just checking our stewards and our site crew have managed to get the crowd off the beach and put it in place. It looks as though they have though, so positive. Well, Makes him look fat. He's been on the team for 25 years. I think, I think it's his last year this year he's going to get retired. Considering the amount of jumps he's got, He's actually not very good at it because he just flies around and kicking you in the face and stuff. 
After a long wait, the Tigers are ready and broadcasting live on social media. Going live, guys. Hi, guys. Bro, little Nancy here. Now walking to the aircraft. So keep in touch. Any questions, please feel free to ask. At Newcastle Airport, the VIP guests have arrived. And for Red Arrow's engineer, Mike Fleming, this event is close to home. The Sunderland Air Show is only about five miles from where I live. So ever since I was younger, I've always traveled up to the air show on my bike or walked up just uh, watch it. Weather here, it's now 350, it's a northerly, so all the nines scattered at 16, there's no few at the moment. David Montenegro, Red One, the team leader, briefs the team. And even the Red Arrows can't plan the weather. We can do three types of show dependent on the weather, and right now I have no idea which show we're going to do. It could be beautiful blue sky or it could be low level clouds so we're going to prepare for all three uh, and then we'll go and deliver it in the air show. Check in 05. Back in Sunderland prayers have been answered. The umbrellas are down and the skies have cleared. And is the change in the weather a big win at the arcade? Yeah, it's, it's been okay and yeah, um, it's been not too bad. Space Invaders has been really good for the system uh, since it's come in and hopefully it will continue. I mean, the, the weather hasn't been great this year. You know, we're, the figures are down slightly, quite a bit. But, um, you know, it's, overall it, the, 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 it's been quite good still. We've had quite good crowds in. I don't know whether they're coming for cover or spending money. A bit of both, I think. How are you doing, all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Have you got yourselves tickets? You know, you can win the car. There's a raffle. I couldn't get in it. <laughs> Kirsty is an ex-Red Arrows pilot. Today, she's flying with the blades, a display that needs a strong stomach and isn't for the faint-hearted. From a pilot's point of view, flying our air show is pretty exhilarating. We do 32 manoeuvres in 15 minutes, so it's pretty non-stop. When we split up and then do all the aerodynamic manoeuvres, like the spins and the snaps and things. You can't do that in a jet aircraft because of the way the engine is built. We've got a propeller on the front and we're very light, very manoeuvrable, so we can do all the really exciting manoeuvres. And at the end of it you think, oh my god, what just happened? Uh, but I love it. Mike Ling, the Red Arrows man on the ground, is ready to guide the boys in. Ian here will give the green light to display once he is content that everything is uh, safe and sound to go. Mike will be having the new Red 10 at the end of the season. And uh, This is my last Sunderland Air Show. I've been coming here for many, many years now. I've, I've displayed here as one of the Red Arrows pilots and I've been here every year as Red 10 in my tenure for the last six years. How are you? It's uh, very sad to be hanging up the red suit at the end of this season and very sad to be leaving this part of the North East having, uh, having been here so many times. And the Tigers have also been given the green light. The 
view's fantastic. You know, it might be a little bit overcast, but the view's, you know, it's a seaside jump and it's, they're always special. About a thousand feet down, you can start to hear people as well, hear people cheer, and that, that's kind of really cool. Sunderland, please put your hands together for the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows! <laughs> Losing at 800 miles per hour. Remember the pilots are working hard. Everything in their bodies is six times heavier. Their blood wants to go from their brains and vital organs to their feet. I think it's fabulous for the North East, fabulous for Sunderland City, and I think it's something that they should be proud of. And they're coming in here like this now, you just, uh, it's awe-inspiring. I reckon I could do it though. <laughs> this one is to you, the people of the North East.